just having their breakfast. And we've got a little visitor, which I thought you might like to see. Try not to make you too seasick. I don't know how close he'll let me get to him. He's a wild. My little visitor this morning just adorable he's just so cute so nice to see the wildlife around and thriving welcome back to my floss tube patchy pony stitcher i'm mel this is my episode number 13 and today is april 11 2019 welcome back if you're a subscriber and if you're new i hope you enjoy my channel and there's something here to your liking so it's been four weeks since I last checked in and gave you an update. So I haven't had a great deal of stitching because I've been preparing for Stitch Mania, but I have had some finishes and I've also had an FFO. Last video I showed you my Yule Queen by Primitive Hair, which I'd finished. And I have finished it off, but I'm still a little bit unsure whether or not I will keep it in the finish that it is. So, this is my framed, uh, framed Yule Queen. Now this is just a cheap plastic sort of ornate frame and it doesn't have the support at the back that I would have liked it to have. So it's not really pillowing like I would have liked it to be. So I still in my mind think that I might put it into a shadow frame and have like a shaker frame and have some snowflakes, which I've ordered, um, but they're coming from China. So <laughs> it could be any time when they arrive. So this is my temporary finish. I may leave it in this, I, I don't know. It depends what the snow comes back like. So I have laced it and it's got a bit of a, and put some wadding under it, there's no glass. So it's got a little bit of a pillow effect. Now I am gonna show you the back, it's not pretty, but um, I wanted you to have a look at the lacing that I did. I did some lacing in my on a previous finish, which I had to ditch. If you want to hear about that, you will need to go back to off floss tube number 12. So this is my lacing that I've done. Now I've laced it straight onto this board uh, because there was some molding inside the frame, which didn't allow me to put it on a bit of a mount. So I've laced it straight onto the backboard that it came with and I've left all the fabric I haven't trimmed it because I don't know what may happen with the stitching what may happen um, with the with the shadow box frame so I didn't want to leave myself short so I've left all my all my um, excess fabric in there but I was really happy with how the lacing came about so this is the finish on my your queen. I think the frame really suits it. It's lovely, but um, I really wanted it to be a little bit more pillowed. But now I did have a start, a whip, and a finish, and an FFO all in one project since I've seen you last. So I'm going to insert a little clip of the beginning of the project, which I filmed back on St. Patrick's Day. So I'll pop that into here. Happy St. Patrick's Day everyone. Today's Sunday the 17th of March and today I'm going to do a little um, Lizzie Kate flip it to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. I won this chart from Laura Cross Stitches giveaway a couple of floss tubes ago so I thought why not, how, why not stitch it on St. Patrick's Day today. So I've chosen a purple linen that I got in a grab bag. Now I haven't actually stitched on linen before so you can see there's quite a few little slubs in it. So it'll be interesting to see how that, um, how I go with that. I'm gonna use a little hoop because it is only a little piece of fabric. So looking forward to getting started. Now this one does have a little charm in it, a little horseshoe charm. And without showing the chart, it's actually included in the 
in the chart. So it's going to be a complete finish on this one. So I'll come back and show you my progress later on today. But looking forward to getting this little, uh, little flip it done from Lizzie Kate. Talk to you soon. Bye. And I didn't get it all done on the one day, unfortunately. I got close, but not quite finished. So I have since finished it, which was really cute. It was a really nice, quick, easy, relaxing stitch. I haven't done one this small before. So this is probably more of the pillow effect that you can see that I would have liked for the Yule Queen. So I quite like how it pop pops out of the frame frame there. So I just popped it in a little cheap black frame because unfortunately it's going to go back in the drawer until next St. Patrick's Day. Um, but that was quite an easy, an easy finish. I didn't lace this one being a smaller frame. I've just popped it straight in, put some wadding underneath, four layers of wadding and each piece got progressively smaller um, under the Ada and straight into the frame. So I'm really happy with how that one turned out. But unfortunately, it's going in the drawer because it's a seasonal one. So, but I was really happy with how that turned out and the little charm on that one. So thanks, Laura. I love this little chart. It was great. And I will put this into my uh, past the stash. I'm going to have a uh, Christmas in July because I'm a July baby. So I'm going to be giving away some presents in July for Christmas in July as part of my birthday celebrations. So that was, um, I think that one was called Luck by Lizzie Kate. Okay, so on to my whips. So I've been working really hard on my Prairie Romance. I'd really like to get some work done on it, as I said last time in my previous update, before Mania starts. Because once Mania starts, there's going to be 31 whips on the go. So I'm going to insert a clip of where I was before with Prairie Romance. So I'll pop that in here. Hasn't this come along so well? As you saw my last little photo, I'd only just squeezed a little bit of his blaze in and now he's certainly coming out of the cross stitch. This beautiful horse, I'm so pleased. I've done two, two more rows. So I've done another full row and then nearly a partial row that I've been working on. I've been spending a lot of time on this one because I really just wanted to start to see it come alive. And I'm really happy with how that's coming along. Lots and lots of different colours. And lots of parking as you can see. Not the neatest of parking but it, it works for me. Isn't it coming along so well? I just love the progress. I love how the horses are starting to come out onto the, onto the Ada and really be prominent within the design. And just having it sitting there and I look at it every day, it just inspires me to keep going. So I'm gonna continue working on that one, probably um, only be working on that one until Mania begins because I'd really like to do another couple of columns because I know once we get started in Mania, there's gonna be so lots, of lo lots of new lovely things to be stitching on. So the next whip I've worked on was my Hawk Run Hello, uh, Farms at Hawk Run Hello by Carriage House Samplings. So I wanted to get this block finished. In my last video, I said I was starting to tire of the pattern and I needed to put it away, but I couldn't put it away without the block being finished. So I'm gonna insert So here's the chart of the farms at Hawker and Hullo. And the one that I was finishing was this one here. So I've, I've made a few changes to it. I've changed the color of the apron and I've also changed the flowers. So have a quick look at that. And this is the final, well not the final, my latest square on my Hawker and Hullo. Farms at Hawker and Hullo. Now the changes that I've made on this one, I changed the colour of the apron to a light blue, which um, I thought, because it was called for white and it was just a little bit too stark. And I also changed the colours of the flowers. They had them charted in browns and golds. Now we've got quite a few apple trees on our property 
and round the apple tree area we've got agapanthers purple and white ones so I've changed the flowers to represent that's what's close to our place here so those purple and white flowers represent the agapanthers on our property so I'll show you the, com the four completed squares that I've got so that's where we are with our hawk run hollow so I love how that looks completed but the thought of starting another block just doesn't thrill me at the moment and I know I'll start another block when I put that into our, my, my mania day. So for mania, I'm going to, each whip will represent one day. So at the moment, I think I've got six. So March, May, one to six will be spent each day on existing whips before I begin anything new. Now, the other whip that I've been working on is my Oz by Ori TM. So I'm working on this one as a sale with Shell from Tranquil Stitches. And Shell just showed her progress today, yesterday. Um, so have a look at Shell from Tranquil Stitches and you, you can just see the difference between the two, the two projects. They both look lovely. So I'll insert, blah, blah, blah. I'll insert a photo, sorry. I'll insert of a picture of where I was up to last time I showed you. And this is where I'm up to now. So, oops, I need to come back a little bit. So I completed Dorothy and I've got Toto. I'll bring Toto up for a bit of a closer look. So I've got Toto completed. I've got the bottom part of the yellow brick road and I've just started on Glinda's wreath which represents her as the witch of the north so I've still got a long way to go but loving how this one is coming along and just yeah really happy I love the Quaker style this this sort of chart speaks to me so I've got double the fabric so I'm gonna hopefully have enough to do my Alice uh, by Ori TM on the other side of of this bit of fabric but it isn't to uh, now I did also change Toto a little bit too he was meant to be three shades of grey and I've um, popped him in with a bit of white um, on his points and under his chest so loving how that one's coming along this one is done on an even weave um, opalescent I think it's a 32 by sparklies with DMC threads that are called for. So even though I don't have a lot of whips to show you today, I feel like I've been constantly stitching on just those three, more so my Prairie Romance. But a lot of my stitchy time this month has been taken up with getting ready for Mania. Um, getting the fabric ready, I've been doing a, a little bit of, of dyeing and even just cutting it all up and ordering the threads and putting all the flosses together and bagging it all up ready to go so come well it'll come the 7th of may when i start a new start it'll be spin the wheel on my tiny decisions app and that will choose the whip that i will begin for the day now i do actually have more kitted up than what i do have day so i may not i'm not going to get to every single thing that i've actually charted up i mean sorry kitted up so it's going to be a surprise to me what makes it and what doesn't make it cross fingers quilting bee my blue flower designs makes it because I've been holding back on starting that I didn't want to do any new starts other than the Lizzie Kate one uh, purely just because I know I'm gonna have so many new things coming up in in May so lots of time spent there it is time consuming getting everything kitted up but it's well worth it when at the beginning of each day you can spin the wheel grab it and and start stitching so I'm going to pop in a little clip here of my stitchy spot of where I'll be spending most of May with my bum parked in the seat stitching. This is a shop that you haven't seen before and this is where I actually stitch from. This is my stitchy spot and what I wanted to show you is I love stitching here and I'm just going to focus on the window and looking out and seeing my patchy pony singing out to me or saying hello. He'll often stand there if he sees me in the window stitching in my stitchy spot. Just love him. Hey, 
Has everyone else got a pile of threads like that? Leftover kits, bits and pieces, things that people have gifted you when they've been de-stashing themselves or friends or family have had bits and pieces that they no longer want. It just seems so wasteful to throw it away. So with my Mania Starts, I actually tried to, as much as I could to use flosses out of that bundle of mess for all the small, small things that I had that didn't really matter what shade of yellow or green that I use. So I've managed to actually cull that down quite a bit, but I'm pleased to be able to use it using from my stash rather than buying flosses in just because of a chart calling for a specific colour. Am I the only one that has a bundle of floss like that though? Do you have a bundle of floss that's a mess but can't bear to throw out? I hope you do. <laughs> it's not just me. Other than being stitching frantically on my three whips that I've shown you and also getting ready for mania, I have been watching a lot of floss tube but I just can't seem to catch up. I've got quite a few people that I like to watch. So I've found that um, while I'm busy and I'm, and I'm watching it, I might be doing the dishes, but I've still got floss tube going or if I'm um, stitching away. And I, I want the, the floss tuber to know that I've actually watched their clip. I'm gonna be putting three little pony heads just as my little signature to say, I've, stepped, I've stopped by and I've checked in with you because I don't always have time to leave a comment. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys could do the same. If it's just a, a smiley face, a thumbs up in the comment field, just to let me know that you've stopped by and, and chatted, well, not that you've chatted, you've listened to me natter on about the cross stitching. I'd love to see your comments. Just a little emoji, just to say hi. So if you see my three little ponies, that's me just giving you a, a bit of a wave and a glad to see you and I've stopped in to, to say hello. Now, giveaways. I didn't have anyone comment on my last giveaways, which is fine, they're just magazine charts. Um, they'll just go to the bottom of the pile and they'll resurface. So I've got three new ones to share with you today. The first one that I have is from the world of cross stitching. I'm not sure what year it is because it doesn't actually date it on the pages. But if you, and now, Please don't say giveaway in the comments, please be over 18 and they're magazine pull out. So if you don't want them ripped out of a magazine or tri-folded, then please don't comment. But if you're happy for all of that, go for it. So the first one that I've got for you today is called Retro Beetle. So it's a V-dub that's in four parts and you can either stitch them as four separate pieces or put it all on one, but they are all in, a, all in their own square. I guess you could actually, um, just match them all up as well if you wanted it to be one piece. So if you're a, a girl from the 80s and, sorry, not from the 80s, from the 70s and like a bit of flower power, go ahead and comment, I'd like to stitch the beetle. The next one I have is from a magazine called Homespun. I'm not sure whether this is just an Australian magazine because um, it, is, it is actually printed in Australia. So this one, is from Homespun and it's called A Bird's Study. Now, this is quite a lovely chart. I've actually, try not to get the glare on it, tried to talk myself out of stitching this one. It's really pretty. I love the little blue eggs in this one. So if you would like to stitch A Bird's Study, just comment below, I'd like to stitch the birds. Now this magazine's a high quality magazine, so it's got lots of information. It's not just two pieces of paper, it's four bits of paper, all about the chart, um, a finishing, finishing instructions and so forth. So that's a bird study. The next one also from Homespun, a different issue, is called Summer Delights. And these are gerberas. Really pretty, love the little bee and the summer in the three in the four different languages. I think that's what it is, four different. Yeah, it must be. But you could leave that out if you didn't want to and just have it stitched as a squared. As a square, as a squared. Just stitch a square of the gerberas. So if you'd like to stitch, what did I say it was called? Summer Delights. 
I think we'll just say I'd like to stitch the flowers. Really pretty, that one. So three giveaways for this month. Now that's really all I have for today. I it was a quick video, really spending a lot of my time getting ready for mania. So what I think I might do with mania, so I can tell you about each chart and what I'm doing, is I'm gonna do a little, I think vlog style on the first of, um, of the <laughs> first of May. So what I might do is just do a weekly video of those seven, the previous seven days, otherwise the video will just be way too long at the end of May. So I'm gonna leave you there. I hope you all have a fantastic Easter. I hope you get lots of stitching time. I hope Easter Bunny is good to you. But don't get any chocolate on that fabric, will you? I haven't done that. No, no, I haven't done that. But hope you have a great Easter, guys. I'm gonna leave you with a bit of a clip from a bit of a beach walk a beach ride that um, I enjoyed recently. And also here in Australia, it's autumn and the bees are getting ready for winter. So they're busy, busy, busy on our nice warm autumn days. So I'm gonna leave you with some footage of that and I will see you in May. Bye.